Jets fans! <laughs> Jets fans, unite! So what's happening, everybody? It's good to be here. It's good to see you. I spent the large portion of this day with you. So I'm having a good day. You know, look, you get used to grumbling and bumbling and stumbling. You get used to it after a while. You start to think it's normal. So, because of that, I'm having a great day. This is Green Bean, everybody. And you have just arrived at episode 51 of Green Bean's Jets Pod. I can't believe that it's been that long. It's amazing. It took me years to get this started. I just, I wanted it perfect and I just couldn't get it. And then one day I just sat down and did it. That's what I did. I just sat down, did it, and 51 weeks later is now. Isn't that cool? I'm happy you're here. I really am. We have so much to discuss. We're going to get into the New York Jets and their loss to the Miami Dolphins, the second loss to this team that I really felt like we were going to win. Really. I really did. The last game I did, this game I did, and we didn't. But before I do any of that, it's very important that I draw your attention. Where is it? Up here? Is it the lights? Is it my nose? I want to bring it to this little friggin' thing. Look at this little tiny, look at it. Little, look at that microphone. It's hard to tell. You think there's some forced perspective. No, look at this little microphone. All my microphones died today. All of them. I got microphones everywhere. Every single mic, even my lavalier mics. You know those little mics that clip on your sleeve for an interview? Those broke today. All the mics. So I had to run out to a store. Everything's closed. It's Sunday night when I'm recording this. And I went to a store and they had, you guessed it, this. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You let me know if this little fella can keep up with us and all of our, our, our angst. It might just fry it out. I think that's what's happening with my microphones. Like, dude, take it down a notch, will you? So, let's see how he does. I'm proud of you. I'm happy you're here. I'm going to try to treat you with love and kindness. I am. Little fella. Little tiny cutie. It's like my finger. It's like, look at that. Eh. <laughs> so before we do get started, I want to also remind you of the contest we're having right here. You can get a t-shirt just like this or some other t-shirts. I'm going to show you right here my newest design. You can get one of those t-shirts of your choice from the GreenBeanJetsFan.com merch store and a grand prize winner will also get the t-shirt. They'll also get stickers, but they will all, on top of that, they will get the Manscaped Ultra Smooth Package. All you have to do to enter, man, is one click here, right there, that subscribe button on this very page, and then go to my other page, Full Time Coaster Tour, and click subscribe there, and you are in. If you want to double your chances, go to my Instagram, Green Bean the Jets Fan, and follow me there. And you have effectively entered two times to win those goodies. And we'll do that. If you'd like to support me even further, don't forget this is a value for value system, man. I'm trying to offer value to you guys as best I can. If you feel that I have, maybe you can return the favor. Patreon is the way that we do that. The link is in the description right there. And as you wrap up your Christmas shopping, the link to the best thing that you can get any sports fan is right in the top of this description. Click on it, sportsmemorabilia.com. That link will take you directly to the Jets page, but that's only the beginning. You can go and search and get anything for anyone who likes sports in any capacity. That's the place to do it, and it obviously helps the channel. Buy more than $50, you get, you get free shipping. So there's that. Woo! We're done. So, we lost the game. Hmm. What do you think? Are you done? So the Jets played the Dolphins today, and I've gotten three, count them, three direct messages today since the game stopped that we've lost three Jets fans today. Dun, 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 and look, I would, it, honestly, if they were actually leaving, I would feel bad. You don't want to lose any of our brothers and sisters. We don't want to lose those people. But I already know they're going to text me next week and tell me why something sucks or is great. I know this. No one, and I mean no one, that told me in a moment of heated passion that they were going to leave 
the Jets that they were done. No one has actually done it. Not one. Not one that I've met. I'm sure they're out there, of course, but not for me. I get told all the time, that's it. This is the last time I'm moving to Canada. You know, something like that. And they never do it. But I understand the feelings, man. Losing to the fish, but we can call them the damn winners today. And I'm sick of it. I hate the Dolphins. I hate losing to them. Yes, we hate the Patriots and all that they've done these last two decades, of course. But in my heart, in my soul, when I became a Jets fan, it was the Dolphins that I hated the most. And those were the best games. Jets-Dolphins were always good games. And guess what today was, guys? It was a good game. We lost by one score, and uh, we, in the last minute of the game, we had a chance to to get to tie it. I mean, hey, on the way there, we uh, we you know we had some stuff to gripe about, no doubt, no doubt. But we also had some stuff to be very very happy about. Can we say that? Can we say that? So people ask me, what happened? What happened today, Bean? What was it? What happened this week with our New York Jets? I can't take it, man. Please tell me what happened. So I'll give you, you want the short answer or the long answer? Which one do you want? You want oh, you want the short one for, you want, the, all right, listen, I'll give you the short answer. And then we'll dissect it, which will effectively be known from here on out as the long answer, okay? The short answer is this, when you ask what happened today. What happened today was we had and a, a very young staff and young batch of players. We got a whole influx of of young players back. We got Michael Carter the first, Michael Carter the second, Brandon Eccles, Bryce Huff. Then we even got Tyler Croft back. So many guys. We got an influx. Tevin Coleman came back. And this batch of young people, young coaches. They put together a great game plan. They came out. They gave it all they had. Some adjustments got made at halftime, and our young team couldn't figure it out. That's what happened today. Okay? They played their asses off. They played hard. And when the Dolphins made their adjustments, they figured it out because they're two years ahead of us in this thing. Don't forget, this is Flores' third year as a head coach. They've had numerous years with multiple draft picks, all the stuff. They're stacking, right? They're ahead of us in this thing. They're on a five-game win streak, dude. They came into this game on a five-game win streak. We came in this game on the worst game of Zach Wilson's career, uh, arguably. So that's what happened. We came out. We played hard. We looked great. We couldn't make adjustments and, and compensate for their adjustments to us, and we lost. That's the short answer, okay? It sounds so simple, doesn't it? It's, that's what happened. That's what happened today. Now there's all sorts of intricacies that we could discuss, and we will. Let's start with Zach Wilson. Let's start with our, our blonde dynamo, our good-looking stud muffin, Zach Wilson, the young quarterback at a BYU from Salt Lake City. He comes here to save us, even though Salah said, hey, buddy, we're not expecting you to save us we're gonna save you actually the word was lift i think he said we're not expecting you to lift us we're gonna lift you let me give you his stat numbers so zach wilson went 13 for 22 for 170 yards zero touchdowns and zero interceptions now a little misleading because he ran in a touchdown and he had a fumble so he did have a td and he did have a turnover but those you know that straight up stat line uh, the box score, let's call it. The box score doesn't show that stuff, but we know. We know the difference. So he did run in a touchdown, and he did fumble. So uh, all those things should be represented. Now, what do we think of that? He only connected on 13 passes today. So does that is that bad? Did he look bad? Does he suck? Well, I would argue no. I would argue that to, to me... He looked more like a professional quarterback today than at any time previously. That's what I'm going to tell you. To me, I thought he came out calm, poised. I thought he was laser precise, surgical even. And you know what's really sad? On two passes that ended up being drops, they may have been his best passes of the day. Threading the needle, zoom, right in there to his receiver's hands. 
dropped. Two of them. Could it change today? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So that has been happening to poor Zach Wilson throughout this young career of his. And now look, in the second half, he came out. He looked a little flustered. They changed their game plan. They went to man. They went tight. Okay, they took away the underneath stuff. They did not respect what we were doing deep. And why would they? We don't have Elijah Moore. We don't have our Corey Davis guy out there. You know what I mean? We have Berrios. We have Mims where I don't know what the hell is going on with that guy. They threw the ball at him one time today. I didn't look at it again. I watched the whole first half again. I did not watch the second half again. Um, but it looked like it was very high. But from my first look, it looked like he should have caught it to me. And I don't know what's happening with that fellow. But anyway, they didn't respect our deep, our deep game. So they took away the underneath, which basically killed what we were doing in the first half. Now, that first half, though, didn't Zach look good? Didn't he show you a few things? Like I said, laser accurate, surgical at times. And damned if I don't tell you that that guy has elite escapability. Elite escapability. When they went in for the half and they came back, I got to tell you, I was talking with O'Leary and Ryan and everybody, and I even said, I fully expect this to continue. He looked so good to me. That I thought there was no way, even with some downturns, may yeah, you know, would come, you know, a couple three and outs. I still, there was no way I thought that that would die as abruptly as it did, but it did. Now he did look good at times in the second half. We had some drives, get a fumble, you know, things happen. That drive killers, right? But he did look. Good. He looked calm. He looked poised. I think he even said in his presser today that he felt like he was the calmest and most engaged in the game, uh, this game, more than any other game this year. He's getting there. Do you realize that Zach Wilson has thrown two interceptions in his last five games? Did you know that? Did you know that? Like, we're all looking for what to hang our hat on. And you, and you see stuff like this. You see two touchdowns and just electric offense in the beginning. Oh my God, was it, was it exciting? We saw Wesco. Yeah, look at me. We saw even that. Wesco gave us the big bicep curl. That's what he gave us. Everything was looking great. And for it to end like that is troubling. It's troubling. But the thing is, guys, is like you got to remember, we're looking for progress. We're looking for Reasons to have hope. We're looking for building blocks, foundational pieces. We're looking for advancement of the game plan, of the overall plan. That's what we're looking for. Did you not see that today with Zach Wilson? It's like, you know, remember a couple weeks ago when we beat the Texans? And we didn't win it right. Remember? Everybody was mad that it just didn't look good. 18 unanswered points in the second half. And it wasn't good. I don't like it. Yeah, I know we won, but that's belong. And it's the Texans. How how great are they? Come on. What are we talking about? It's the Texans. And then we played the Eagles. And Zach Wilson comes out and he throws three first half touchdowns. His first opening drive touchdown of the entire season. And what does everybody talk about? Do you remember? Think about it real quick. We, we talked very little about those three, those three touchdowns. We talked about one thing. The second half pick. The one interception that he threw. Now, it was an ill-timed interception. We didn't need it. You know what I'm saying? It was bad. But why is the three why are the three touchdowns outweighed by the one pick? Especially in a year like this when we're trying to look for progress. He threw two interceptions in his last five games. Now, to be fair. One of those games was a New England game, and he did not finish the game. He played the first quarter, or whatever it was. But he didn't throw a pick in that game. He's thrown two interceptions in his last five games. So, in the beginning half of the season, the first half of the season, what was one of Zach Wilson's major issues? Interceptions. Was it not? We're not seeing those so much. We didn't see one today. Now, there was one pass that could have been, but it wasn't. You know, that stuff happens all the time. Barra, we dropped an interception today. So that stuff happens. That's part of football. You can't take what could have been and be like, ah, he sucks because of what could have. You can't do that either. 
So he didn't throw an interception today. Now he got crushed and he fumbled the ball. He got some block passes. You know, I mean, lots of stuff happened today. But we're seeing the progress. I'm telling you. I haven't felt as good as I feel about Zach Wilson today all season. This is the this is it. I'm seeing the upward trajectory. Now, am I psyched? No. But again, we're looking for things this year. They look for the offensive line. Our offensive line played lights out in the first half. Okay? I think he had one sack, and I believe, if I remember correctly, it was a little hold the ball too long kind of a thing. It's okay. The offensive line played lights out. Do you remember what the offensive line was made of today? We had Connor McDermott, who, by the way, is our third tackle playing. Becton obviously has not played all year. Uh, George Fant, who's been slam dunk free agent signing. Okay. He's been great. He's out. So Connor McDermott comes in. He plays a fantastic first half. Second half, he got beat up a little bit. Guess who else went down in the second half? AVT. Dan Feeney was in there. Now, Morgan Moses, who's had, I would say Morgan Moses has had a positive year, but not a great year. He has some clams, and today was one of those days. He got beat a couple times that I saw. Now, I don't know the official numbers and all that sort of stuff, but Morgan Moses, in my opinion, unless it's a cheap deal and a competition kind of thing, Morgan Moses might not be back. All right, he's obviously on that one-year contract. We know that, but he's a good player, man. He's consistent. He doesn't get hurt, you know, knock on wood, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, the best ability is availability, right? We'll, and we'll hold that here. But he has games like today where he does give up a few big, a few big clams, all right? So, and that happened. So Morgan Moses, like, okay, look, you want to extend for a year, 3.5 million, and we bring somebody in and they compete with you kind of a thing? Great. But not just to be penciled in as the starter, I would say. I don't know. But the line is looking significantly better than we did earlier in the season. LDT, who's still not perfect, looks like a guy who we might want to extend. right? So there's all kinds of stuff going on. But that's what I'm saying. Don't forget what happened in the second half. I mean, I saw some tweets today. They said our offensive line is garbage. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't feel the same way. I don't feel the same way. Again, we're looking for progress. We're looking for development. We're seeing it with Zach Wilson. Let's talk about another guy, Mike LaFleur. Mike LaFleur. Mike LaFleur. Another young guy, another rookie who came out today and had a game plan that was worthy of remembrance. When's the last time we saw something that resembled a hook and ladder? When? That happened today. All sorts of creative plays, all sorts. Now, on the attempted touchdown to Zach Wilson from Keelan Cole, that's the kind of play that should have been Jamison Crowder. That's our guy. Why is Keelan Cole throwing his first pass of the year? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. Jamison Crowder's there. He's got a great arm. He's thrown numerous touchdowns in his, in his career. Let him throw it. Keelan Cole... Almost threw a pick, hit the defensive lineman in the back. Zach was open. If he just lasered it in there, that was a touchdown. Instead, we got a field goal and the whole thing. So again, all sorts of all sorts of maybes and almost and stuff like that. But it was there. Mike LaFleur called a fantastic first half. One of the best that I've seen for the Jets in a long time. What happened? Miami made adjustments. Mike LaFleur is not there yet. He can't figure it out yet. He's not able to, on the fly, change and adjust and do it. He's just, we've seen it numerous times this year. When the adjustments are made, more times than not, he doesn't know how to compensate for that. He's going to get it. Clearly, you can see that this is a talented offensive mind. Am I wrong? Again, he couldn't do it. He can't finish the game. This is the stuff that you expect. This is the stuff that I expected from the beginning. Lots of sloppiness, lots of almosts, lots of missed swings, man. And that's what we're seeing. Zach Wilson, Michael LaFleur. What about our running backs? We got Tevin Coleman. We got Michael Carter back. Dude, both of those guys look great. Now, I do not understand why they force feed Austin Walter in there. I don't get it. Every rep by another running back, 
takes away potential to get in the groove for one of the other guys that are clearly better. I'm, I'm not listening to arguments otherwise. I'm not. Tevin Coleman and Michael Carter are better running backs than Austin Walter. I don't know why he's in. I don't get it. This is a solid guy. That's the only thing. He's one of two people that came over from San Francisco, and they haven't learned that that has no friggin' value. To them, it does. For example, Michael Carter had eight carries today. He only got 18 yards, so he had a paltry 2.3 yards per carry, but he was better than that. You see that if you give this guy the ball 15, 20 times, he has the ability to make something out of nothing at any given time. But no, we take some of those away for Austin Walter. Now, I'm not trying to say Austin Walter had, you know, more carries or anything like that. He only had two. But Michael Carter's a good blocker in pass protection, as is Tevin Coleman. And we don't give these guys enough to get them going. They get a good play and they're out. They put him in bad situations. So this is the stuff that I fully expect Mike LaFleur, Mike LaFleur to learn from. Tevin Coleman had eight rushes for 50 yards, a 6.3-yard average. Looked good today. Michael Carter had eight for 18. Austin Walter had two for 12. He had a six-yard average. Again, looks good, doesn't it, on paper? All I see is two carries that Michael Carter didn't get. That's what I'm saying. Austin Walter, to me, uh, I don't get it. Zach Wilson had four rushes for 12 yards as well. Uh, and Braxton Berrios had a couple exciting runs, only 10 yards, but exciting nonetheless. Showed creativity on the play calling as well. Now the receiving, Jamison Crowder was, was the number one guy with 40 yards. Ryan Griffin had a couple nice plays. Tyler Croft had a couple nice plays. Berrios only had one reception for 26 yards. It felt like he was in the game or an impact in the game a lot more than that. But that's it. He had one reception, and then he, had, he was the recipient of that hook and ladder type of thing. Uh, Michael Carter had another reception. Denzel Mims, none. And uh, Zach Wilson would have had a touchdown if Keelan Cole could hit him. <laughs> but that didn't happen. So let's, you know, look. Again, like, you know, everybody's making a big deal about Zach's comments after the game. They said, oh, you know, the offense, they were hitting 300 yards and you haven't hit 300 yards once since you, since you came back in the lineup. And he said, I'm not really thinking about that. And they're chopping his head off. They're chopping his head off. Do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that. Why do you have? Why was? Why is there a problem that the kid's not even paying attention to stats? Why should he give a shit about throwing for three hundred yards? Now, wouldn't it be great? Yeah, sure. But that's not the focus. I'm not thinking about that. I'm trying to make sure I understand the offense, get my footwork down, get comfortable in the schemes, make the right calls, make the right moves. Go through my progressions. That's what he's focused on. He could care less about the stats. There they go. This is not a good look from Zach Wilson. Trying so hard to take a young guy who has literally taken accountability for every single thing that's happened this year. Not one time has he said it's somebody else's fault. Not once. And that's even in the face of other people saying that maybe he could do things differently. GBR. Never, not once. He's taken accountability for everything. You ask him about stats and he says, I don't give a damn. That's a problem? I don't see the problem. And I need you to understand that it's not a problem. It's not. The fact that Zach Wilson doesn't care if he throws for 300 or 10 yards, he wants to learn the offense, that's what this year is. We should be happy about that. And I, for one, am happy about that. All these media types trying so hard to make drama. And I want to point out again, just in, in the face of, of uh, or let's say in the aftermath of the Urban Meyer firing and all the drama everywhere, the Jets have gone through more stuff than any other team in the NFL this year from whether it's food poisoning or staff members passing away or injuries or this or 400 pounds or this guy's eating himself to death, whatever it is, the onslaught by media sources to try desperately to make something happen, Salah's contractor, the losses, 
the complete ineptitude at times, the Mike F. and White stuff. This team has stayed together the whole time. Not a single fracture. And that is what we're trying to focus on, guys. That's what character is. That's what they're talking about with drafting the right guys. That's what they're talking about. And that's what we're seeing. These guys are getting it. They look better and better every single week. Every single week we're seeing progress. Now, they can't maybe finish it. Losing by one score, having the ball with a minute left, trying to go down there and tie it is not a problem. It's exactly the type of game I expected to lose. Now, the fact that we were leading and all that, I get it. I get it. It's not optimal the way that it happens, but that's the truth of the game. Now, the defense, let me just say this about the defense. Lots of hard playing. Bryce Hall, lots of great plays. Brandon Eccles, good, bad. Michael Carter, good, bad. Ashton Davis, another pick. He's got two. Brandon Eccles with the with the pick for a touchdown. It's great. Don't forget, man. This defense went, what, nine weeks without a pick? Whatever it was. Ashton Davis has two. Brandon Eccles, we had two today. There are positives, guys. There are things to hang our hat on. Now, if they could learn to tackle, we got something. But whenever we have these discussions from here on out moving forward about where we should use our premium draft capital, and guys like myself say defense – and you or whoever else says, no, 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 we need a receiver, we needed this, we needed that. Just going to point to today. When you see that you have a bunch of young guys out there learning it and getting better, but we need some legit blue chip defensive players. That's what we need. C.J. Mosley's out there all by himself, and even though he did a lot of good today, he missed some tackles and everything, he, he's, it's everything's on him, the way it feels up front anyway. So when we talk about how to use our two first-round picks, now, look, if we drafted a center or if we drafted a guard, or we draft, I'm not going to complain if it's the best player on the board and all that jazz. But I'm just using this to support the logic that, nah, man, I think maybe taking a blue-chip edge and maybe Kyle Hamilton or maybe Sauce Gardner or somebody like that, and I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it makes a lot of sense to get some – Blue chip talent on the defense. Yes, guys like Hall and Eccles and Michael Carter, they're great. Bryce Huff, yeah, totally. Great. We need some blue chip on that defense to make those guys' games get elevated. That's what we need. So, yeah, man, the tackling was a big problem today. How many missed tackles? How many missed tackles? I saw something today. I don't know if it was... Real or not, but we have, I think we might be breaking some records with missed tackles this year. It's incredible. I don't know if that's real or not, but that's a problem. Then the schemes are still bothering the hell out of me. But we got young guys learning the system. They're getting their year. They're getting their lumps. They're taking it on the chin. And that's what you want. You want this year. What, how many, what if this year was Tremaine Johnson and all these guys just running around that you know you're going to cut next year? Man, am I excited for this team. I think Sala, LaFleur, and the rest of the boys got these guys playing hard. Again, I want to point out that the offensive line, dude, we're on our third tackle. Okay, we were on our second guard today. Like, there's depth on this team. It needs time to be supported, to be, to, you know, to be implemented. All the systems, all the players. We need guys here for a minute. You want your depth to have been here for a year or two. They know the system when they come in. Don't forget, Connor McDermott, he was injured all year. He was on IR all year. He's only been back for two or three weeks. And he's in there starting today. Did a great job. Couldn't finish the game. Couldn't finish it on top. Looked great today. There were some blocks by Connor McDermott. There was some. There were some plays where Connor, Mc, Connor McDermott was nothing short of a mauler today. Hey, again, it all boils down to just not being able to get it done. That's it. Young staff, you know, and we say it all all year. You know, it's you know we still have using the same excuses. Well, it, it's not the same. It's the same reason because that's the truth. Again, I'm seeing progress all over the place. I'm psyched about it. I hope you are too, man.
This is good stuff. These are the games I expected to lose. Or not the games, but the types of games I expected to lose. Now, let's talk about draft position. Like, you know, some guys are struggling with the end of the season. Like, look, we're clearly not going to the playoffs, right? We're clearly not going anywhere. So why win? Why win games? Now, in years like last year, when you know you got a walking dead coach, you know the running backs leaving, you might even be moving on from the quarterback, all that sort of stuff, winning games is dumb. Okay, you want to lose out because these guys are gone and you want the best possible draft pick, you know, especially when we last year were looking at a quarterback and all that sort of stuff. This year is a little different. Now, I totally get guys that are still in that mode. I get it. You know, if you get out of the top five, you might lose out on Thibodeau, Hutchinson, maybe even Karloftis or Hamilton. Like you might you might lose out on those on those guys. Like think about if no quarterbacks are taken in the top five. And you're pick five. And it goes Thibodeau, Hutchinson, Hamilton, Karloftis. You lost the top three pass rushers, the only real blue chip pass rushers in the draft. Yes, you have Ojabo and a couple of others that are good, but they're not really considered the same level as those three elite guys. And then you have the best safety to come out in, I don't know, 10, 20 years. They're all gone because you slipped out of the top five. So I get it. I get it. But what's worth more? These guys that we have. Now, don't forget, man. There are core guys on this team. Guys like Zach Wilson. Guys like Elijah Vera Tucker. Like Michael Carter. Michael Carter II. Brandon Eccles. Bryce Hall. These guys need to start seeing and believing that, hey, man, we're closer than you think. So winning some games toward the end today, if they would have pulled that out, it would have been the biggest victory of the year. But it's still a positive because they played their asses off. We overcame tons of mistakes, tons of blown plays, bad penalties, as every same as every other week. The Bryce Hall pass interference, the, the pass went into the first, it went into the crowd. How do you call a pass interference on a, on a, on a pass that's 20 friggin' yards over his head? I, I don't know. But I guess that's not a rule anymore. I don't know. So there's all kinds of adversity, all kinds of reasons to me. There's all kinds of reasons for that. But if they start to put things together, wrapping up the season, ending it on that positive note, these guys are going to be here a minute. All of them. The whole batch of these young guys are going to be here for a little while. You want them to start believing, hey, man, we ended it on a high note. We're close. We're going to add some people. We're going to keep working at this thing. We're going to keep gelling as a team. We got something here. And then the coaches are going to learn from their mistakes, go back and look at the whole year and go, hmm, that's what I should have did. That's where we went wrong. That sort of stuff. Damn, I won't make that mistake again. This is all for the greater good, man. So winning some games or at bare minimum playing really good ball toward the end of the season here. We got three more games, man. I would have liked to beat the Dolphins today. I got to say, this was this was the game for me that I wanted to win. Now we got to beat Jacksonville, right? Got to beat them, right? <laughs> oh. But who knows? So the consolation prize, if we lose, is that our draft position keeps staying in that top five realm. The bad news is these guys end on a sour note instead of ending their very tough rookie seasons and second year seasons on a, on a high note. A high note will be better. It'll, it will be better for the long term. It's not the end of the world, but it would be better for the young core if they went out. Now, Seattle, they moved the Seattle game to Tuesday, so we don't know what that's all about. But one thing I will tell you is the Carolina Panthers just snuck in to between us and the Giants with pick six. How crazy is that? That means that we have the sixth overall second round pick from them. So if think about it. If we have, let's say we have the top, the fourth pick, 
in the first round. Seattle gives us the seventh pick. So we have the four, the fourth and seventh pick in the first. Then we have the fourth and sixth pick in the second because of Carolina. It's not a bad deal, man. It's not a bad gig with these Joe Douglas trades. The NFL draft order looks like this as of this week. The Jaguars, two years in a row, have stolen the first overall pick from the truly deserving team. Last year it was us. This year it's the Detroit Lions that they're going to get shifty up there and start winning some games to wrap it up. They're going to lose out on having any pick that they could have wanted in the draft. Right now they're at number two. They do have the potential to slide back into number three, maybe even four. They do. They have that potential. The Jets are at number four. So it goes Jacksonville this week, the Detroit Lions, the Houston Texans, who beat the Jaguars today, the New York Jets, the New York Giants, the New York Giants via the Chicago pick, and then the Panthers. So the, it says the Panthers are actually at seven. That's where it is. They're not six. They're seven. And then the Jets have the eighth pick from Seattle now. But they haven't played yet. And they're playing the Rams, and they could lose. That could push them above the Panthers. It could. That could push them up to, to, to seven. So, and then the rest of it is uh, the, the Falcons at nine and the Philadelphia Eagles at ten. So that's the top 10 right there. Jets are currently at four and eight. Two top 10 picks. You can do a lot with that. As long as we don't package them to move up to one, I, that's the only thing I don't want to do. We could trade them both. We could sit where we are and take. We can trade back with one and pick a player. We can do anything except package them things like Terry Bradway did. Now, granted, they weren't two top ten picks, but they were two firsts. He packaged them to move up and get a defensive tackle named Dwayne Robertson, and I am not into that, man. That's the only thing. We have too many holes to start playing games like that. Use our two firsts, use our two seconds, use our third, use our two fourths and our two fifths, and let's get something going here. Let's get something going here. Let's get an influx of young talent to go with the influx that we got last year. These guys are playing. Now, let me just remind you, too, about the defense. They had a terrible day tackling. Terrible. They made the Miami Dolphins offense look like a, like they had the number one rushing game in the NFL, which we do know was 31st coming into this game. I don't know what that's all about. Lots of times they were in good position to stop the run, and they just didn't. Sometimes they were up to five or six missed tackles on the play. I don't know what that is. But on the same day, they got two interceptions, and they caught a fake punt on fourth and inches, and they stopped it and got it. They stuffed it. They got it. They blew it up. The punter, let me just say, that was the worst fake punt I've ever seen. The punter almost had, he had his hands on his hips. He never looked like he was ready to receive the ball. Never. They were trying to quick snap it, and our defense was ready. And they had a couple really nice stops, man. But this stuff with them going forward on fourth and, and, and inches and all that stuff, like they, this is the stuff that we have to overcome. This is the stuff. And our defense, man, they play hard. There's a lot there. We can't quite put it together. We have good games. We have good periods. We have good halves. They can't put it together. We need more. We need more horses. That's all it is. And the old brick scheme, I don't know what they're going to do with that. So I've got to look at that. <laughs> He's got to take a look at that this offseason, man. I'm telling you. But that all said, like, like, like I said, like we're talking about the negatives. We're, and there are negatives, of course. There's our, there are plenty of positives, guys. Plenty. Especially in a year when all we're really looking for is for the young core to get their feet underneath them. That's it. And not... Just the players being the young core, the coaches. That's what we watched today. We saw a group of guys came out excited, played damn good football. There were adjustments made, and they couldn't get it done quick enough. They couldn't compensate. That's okay. That's okay. So what do you think, Jets fans? Where are we? Are you happy? Are you bent? Where are you? Let me know in the comments like you guys know. I love to chat with you. As much as I can in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really am grateful that you guys are here. I'm grateful to get the time that I do with you guys. 
All that said, we got three more weeks. Let's go at it. Let's get this season done the right way. Let's go beat the Bucks and the Bills. We'll end this season right. Have a great day, Jets fans. And go Jets. Thank you.